All right, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about rivet nuts. These guys right here. So, oh, just drop it. <laughs> Cut! So, if you guys don't know anything about this, it's uh, basically cylindrical and it's threaded inside and you basically bust a hole on your firewall or whatever the hell you're working on and then you pop this in and then you compress it with a tool to expand this area right here. And uh, I'll show you how that's done. Over here, my spoiler is held on by rivet nuts. Basically, I got a, uh, a drill bit, I drilled holes, I inserted this piece and then I expanded it so it just holds on to place. All right, and down here, I'm also using rivet nuts for the side skirts. Makes install so much easier and less ghetto than using self-tapping screws. I've seen people use self-tapping screws for their side skirts and for their fender flares. So I'll show you how that's done right now. So on the table here, we have two tools. This is my smaller hand riveter. This is perfect for M6, M5, M3 bolts. And the rivet nut goes right here, right? And then you basically just compress it using this lever right here. And once it's compressed, it looks like this. See that? The back end right there gets crushed and then it holds on to whatever material that you have this thing on. So for example, this is a light panel for the GV light and I've set a rib nut back here. And on the back, you can see how it's flattened and uh, held on press fit into this hole. The trick is when you drill a hole, I've already done this uh, beforehand so I save time drilling. When you drill your hole, you got to make sure that it's perfectly the size of the outside body of your rib nut. See that? Because when I put this in here, it's perfect. See that? It won't even really wiggle because it's really tight. And then once you compress it, and that's how it looks right there. So uncompressed, compressed. And then once it's compressed, you can't take this out other than um, by drilling it. You have to drill it out to pop this thing off. So it's perfect because it's permanent. So imagine this is your firewall and you need to mount some brackets for your catch can. You basically drill your hole like so, insert your riv nut like so, use your tool right here to compress the riv nut right there, done. Now this is the baby version. This is easy for smaller rib nuts. If you have a big rib nut that you need to drive, you can use this guy right here. This is my big Astro Nomadic 1442. So with this, you can put a lot of pressure on the rib nut and it's easier to compress. So if you have a giant rib nut like this guy right here, this is an M8 and the M6 is considerably smaller. See that? M6, M8. This is your typical bolt that you take off your car, like an M, M6 1.0. This is an M8. So this tool right here comes with different adapters to drive different uh, rib nuts. So this is M5, M6, M8, 10, 24, quarter, 20, 3, 8, 16. So it just depends on what you're working on. The biggest thing is drilling this hole just right for your rib nut. If you make it too big, when you compress it right here, it'll fall right in the hole and then, you know, it's not a secure fit. So uh, I'll show you how this is done using, say this is, this is already a drilled hole. So here's our rib nut, like so. And then I'm just gonna adjust this throw right here to give me more leverage back here because right now I don't have a lot of leverage. So See this? See how that's growing? That's gonna give me more leverage to crush this nut. So all you have to do, you insert it from the back or the front, whatever that you're working on. Right there, see that? And then make sure you're completely straight. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. It's usually better with two hands. Let's see if we can compress it. See that? It's already starting to compress. You got to make sure that your tool is perfectly straight. If you're crooked, you're going to have problems. So see that it's getting crushed right into the fiberglass. Now, depending on what you're working on, you don't want to overdo it because 
you can deform the uh, surface that you're working in. There you go. That's installed. Let me back this out so I can show you what I'm doing here. See that? It's set. Now I was doing this with two hands, so it was kind of tough, but over here, see how it's not perfectly set? It's kind of up a little bit. It's not a big deal. It's still on there. It's still solid. It's flush on this side. So that'll hold, but typically you want this look right here. This is perfectly uniform and you know clean. But this I was just doing with two hands because, or one hand and two hands because I'm filming right now. So uh, anyways, it doesn't matter how that looks right now because I'm just showing this for uh, educational purposes. But this is how I would typically do it. I did this off camera. And these guys also are off camera, but this is a low pro version. As you can see, see how the head's a lot smaller. These are the bigger version. These are both M6. That's an M6, that's an M6. The only difference is the head. The bigger the head, the more leverage you have with the material you're working on. Um, the smaller the head, the easier they are to actually pull off, but they're more flush. So it depends on what you're, you're going for or what you're working on. And also there are rev nuts for plastic. This steel one's specifically for um, body work, but you can use it for this stuff. Doesn't matter. There you go. And oh, they also come in aluminum or steel. I usually prefer steel because they'll last longer. Aluminum, you might pull out the threads. So it just depends on what you're doing. You can get all this stuff from Amazon. Just search rivet nut. So that's pretty much it. Simple video. Um, if this was helpful, let me know. If not, let me know. Ooh.